Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Uh, welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing great. Hope everybody's having uh, a wonderful weekend. Freakish weather here uh, in the Northeast of New Jersey, pretty much all the way down uh, the Northeast. It's 65 degrees. It's January the 12th. It's 65 degrees. It's absolutely crazy. Mother Nature is off the chains. I mean, literally off the chains. If you, if you are looking for the most significant uh, structure in the world. It's Mother Nature. And unfortunately, right now, uh, the, the the crazy fires is going on in Australia, the earthqu earthquakes that's going on, um, you know, in Puerto Rico, and this crazy wild weather all over the place. Uh, it's just amazing. It's something that you know nobody can you know nobody can predict and nobody can guard. So hopefully everybody's staying safe. Hopefully everybody is enjoying this crazy weather up and down the Northeast because we know uh, it's not going to be uh, like this forever. And I know it's probably going to go down back to the thirties. Uh, very, very soon, but you know, such as life, right? Unpredictable, such as life. So, um, let's talk about the markets. So, as everybody knows, uh, for all you guys who've been watching this broadcast for you know for a long time, uh, you kind of know I, I trade the same stocks over and over again. Um, I trade beta ninety, probably ninety five percent of all my trades are the same names: uh, Tesla, Amazon, Netflix, um, Nvidia, Apple. You know, it's just it's uh, Alibaba, Facebook, Square. It's the same names, right? It's pretty much the same names. And the reason why I trade the same names, and, I, and I've said this for for years and years and years, um, I believe the higher a price stock goes, right? Uh, if you notice, all these stocks are all uh, triple digits, generally triple digits. And the higher a price goes, especially like an Amazon or something, uh, that is represented by less retail, right? Because again, realistically, retail. Um, most of retail, okay, is uh, longer-term investors, or they're learning the craft, or you know, learning how to trade in their infancy stages, and they just can't simply afford to trade an Amazon, or you know, or uh, or a Google, or you know, or a Tesla. So they generally tend to um, you know tend to attract the smaller names. That's why you see. Uh, 3,000 people, for example, in a small cap alert service. Because 3,000 people, there's a lot more retail represented than, well, people trading Amazon. Uh, and this is the reality. It's nothing, it's nothing good or bad, but it's just the reality. And the reason why I trade the same names over and over again, they're highly predictable because of the lack of participation of retail. So uh, most traders, right, now I don't care if you have a $2,000 account or a $2 million account, Everybody can afford to buy a five dollar stock, a twenty dollar stock, but most people cannot afford to, you know, trade with any type of uh, capacity like a Tesla. Okay, we'll get to Tesla in a second uh, because the price is approaching five dollars, five hundred dollars a share. So for somebody to buy a thousand shares of a two dollar stock, or to buy, for example, forty shares of Tesla, it's apples to oranges, and that's why most people, most retail, are not trading to this capacity at these prices. The, the higher the price goes, the less retail is going to be represented. And the higher probability you can figure out once technical analysis gets confirmed, you can figure out most times than not what's going to happen next. And for all you guys who've been you know been watching, I love Tesla. It's my favorite stock to trade. Okay, um, by far it's my favorite stock to trade, both long, uh, both short. So the the idea that Tesla's on this big run is amazing. And nobody, again, nobody could have predicted this big run. Okay, uh, absolutely not. I've been taking. Uh, bits and pieces. If you've been watching this the, the weekend, um, you know, the, the video throughout the week, you see I've been just taking pieces of you know, of trades on Tesla to the upside, to the downside, mostly to the upside now. Um, but but it's nothing and it, it's nothing new to me. Uh, the problem is when you're a new trader, okay, and you see the shiny penny, and you see the shiny penny on the floor, you are tripping over yourself to pick it up. So I saw I saw a lot of posts this week. Um, on you know the different various uh, social media platforms, talking about new traders, okay, that have never even looked at Tesla's direction, they are sipping the Kool Aid to, to such a degree that they are completely deviating from what they've been doing, okay, whether it's uh, the mid cap market, the futures market, the small cap market, whatever the case may be, and they're taking all their attention to Tesla, the shiny penny, the sexy trade. Remember, all these years I've been saying. It's not the sexy trade. It's the boring, lethargic trade 
that you want. Okay, you want the highly predictable trade. You want the the trade that you you could control. You don't want the trade that you've never had any experience with. You have no you know you have no track record with. You have no expectations of what the stock can do when it stalls out. But yet you are attracted because again it's Times Square, right? It's the Times Square. It's the whole theory. Somebody comes from Wichita, Kansas, the first time to Manhattan. They're going to Times Square. It's the flashy lights, the excitement, the energy, right? They want to be involved. Again, nobody lives in Times Square, right? The, the richest people uh, in New York are living in the Upper East Side and Tribeca, right? All these areas that tourists are not going to because, again, that's the area of safety. That's where you want to live. It's quiet there. Life is predictable there. It's, it's everyday business. When you're attracted to something because it's sexy, you lose control. Right, you lose control. Uh, the FOMO, right, the fear of missing out, kicks into the highest degree, and next thing you know, you are trading as a victim. You don't even know it, but subconsciously, you are trading as a victim. You're not trading as the aggressor, okay, uh, as the hunter. And unfortunately, I saw a lot of you know new traders this week talking about, oh my God, I can't believe I got destroyed in Tesla. I got short trying to pick a top. And then I got run over trying to you know, t take the bounce and it kept on going lower. And, and again, how could somebody trade something like this? For anybody who's been trading Tesla for years, okay, we know this is normal. Maybe the average true range has expanded. okay, And maybe this is a run that nobody could have possibly predicted. And shorts are just getting manhandled you know, for the most part, right? But this is normal. okay. This is normal. And here's one of the advantages, and this is what I've been talking about for years, that you know, you're not trying to trade the sexy stock. You're trying to trade the most boring group possible. And ironically, the most boring group for me, okay, and anybody, I mean, everybody's been trading the live webinar, I'll tell you, although we trade the most aggressive names, okay, your Amazons, your Apples, and so forth and so on, your Teslas, these stocks are the most predictable and the easiest to control because our familiarity with them, because our relationship with them. And again, not every day, can put in an expansion candle of $20, $25. Most days, maybe an expansion candle will be $3, $4 a share. But the it's the ability to know what its tendencies are over and over, day in, day out, has kind of led us to this point. So for a trader who's coming out for the first time ever and saying, I'm going long at you know, Tesla, it's going to 500. It probably will, right? Probably will. And we'll talk about the specifics of what's probably going to happen next in a few minutes. But the point is, a new trader that's never traded Tesla down here or down here or down here or down here. Again, you don't you don't know what the stock is capable of doing. You don't know the proper tier size that you should be trading the stock, or you you should be trading the stock at all. Again, a lot of people think that every single stock is for everybody, and that and it's so for and it's so wrong. Again, if you're a new trader, again, think about think about all the obstacles that are in front of you. Okay, well, and this is kind of how it correlates to Tesla. When you're a new trader, there's a better chance than not you're underfunded. Okay, there's also a better chance than not that you are probably again, if your only exposure is social media, chances of not you're probably really absorbing bad information for the most part. Let's be honest, you probably are. Okay, you have no risk tolerance. Your process is very, very small right now because, again, it's not your fault. You're trading less than two, three years. So you're not exposed yet to what the market ha has to offer you. The market structure is still new to you. Okay, uh, The way a stock's tendencies will be new to you. Um, you have no risk management. Okay, Again, you're still in the hopium mode. I hope to God, please God, let the stock go. I'll do anything. Let the stock work out. So you're not fully in control of what you're doing. Now throw in, okay, think about this logically, now throw in one of the most aggressive stocks in the market, okay, fueled by the most raw emotions on both sides. Tesla Q, Tesla's going to zero. Tesla's going to 5,000, right? And this has been going on for year after year after year. And this is one big recipe, okay, for an absolute disaster. So when you're an absolute new trader and the only exposure you have is to your little world, okay, and then next thing you know, you step up out of that comfort zone. Again, that comfort zone could still probably be bad for you. You're probably still not taking advantage of your individual space, but you step out of that comfort zone, okay? At least what you know, okay? It's, 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 the, it's the theory of 
the, the lesser of the two evils. So you, you already exposed the lesser of two evils. You're still not getting anywhere, but now you turn to yourself and say, well, wait a minute, the grass is, might be green on the other side. What is this Tesla that everybody's talking about? Okay, and you didn't trade it here, 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 you didn't trade it here. Now you're trading here because now you hear everybody talking about it. And again, there's a difference between trading and there's a difference between gambling. When you're trading, you're looking for the highest probability of defined risk that you can control a possible next measure move. Okay, this is what's happening here. This is what's happening here and here and here and most here. Once you start getting into airspace, you've lost control. Okay, you've completely lost control because remember, a breakout is not because a stock is taking out highs. A breakout is because a stock is taking out a channel. The longer the distribution, the longer the base, the highest probability move that's going to happen. So when the highest probability move that's going to happen is right here and over here and over here, up here, you are, again, almost in the market God's hands. And you are have no safety net, okay? Your stock now is $30, $40 away from the quote-unquote breakout area. And now you're in hope mode. You're in prayer mode because the stock, when it goes against you, you don't know what its average true range is. You're still discovering what the tangible value of market structure as a general hold is. So you have no business being in a stock like this because, again, this is not fitting your personality. This is not fitting your experience level. All this is doing is fueling your injection of FOMO. I don't want to miss out. Tesla's going to go to 500. Oh my God, look at somebody's buying 700 calls. Oh my God, somebody's buying January of 2021, 900 calls. I can't miss out. I can't miss out. And this is all happening subconsciously. And all you're doing is putting yourself in a position that you are putting on all risk versus a small area of reward because, again, you have no relationship with the trade. You don't know what it's capable of. All you're seeing is of what the stock has already done, and now you're hoping right? You're hoping and praying that when this musical chair game ends, and again, who's to say it will, right? Like I personally think Tesla probably still has one more run at 500. Okay. And that run maybe extends to 525, maybe 550. Or again, maybe tell, well, Tesla gets, starts building below this channel here and starts going all the way down to 450. We don't know yet, right? We don't know yet. But at least I have a game plan. At least I've been trading Tesla for years. At least I've been trading Tesla for the most part pretty much every day for the last two, three years, whether it's long, whether it's short. So again, I have no excitement levels in this trade. I, I have no expectations because I'm still waiting for confirmation of what's going to happen next. I'm not a good guesser, right? Maybe it goes to 600, maybe it goes to 400. We, we don't know, right? We have absolutely no idea. So I'm waiting. The problem is the new trader, again, they are frustrated because they have lack of process. They are frustrated because they have lack of capital. They are frustrated because they missed the train. They're trying to play catch up. And the worst thing you could probably do or possibly do is play catch up on something, okay, that you have no history with, you have no opinion on, you have no directional bias of which way the stock should be trading, not the way you want to see you trading, but should be trading. And all you're doing is putting out chips on the table and you're hoping that the stock performance for the past two weeks will carry on for the next couple of weeks that you're in the trade. And unfortunately, that's just not the way trading works, okay? It is a recipe for a disaster, okay? You are putting yourself in a position of victim instead of, uh, instead of uh, predator. That's the way it is. Again, you don't see the, you know, you don't see the gazelle, right? You don't see the gazelle chasing the lion or, the, you know, or the tiger. You see the tiger chasing the gazelle. And when you are chasing a stock that just put up a 150 point move with no history of price action or measure potential, you are, you are the gazelle subconsciously. You might even know that, but your, 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 your conscious, okay, is just not letting you let this trade go. You want to participate. You want to tell the story. You want to make the quick gains. And the problem is you are putting yourself and you're putting your feet in the line of fire because again, the trade is already done. The value is already gone. And all you're trying to do is be that greedy pig that just had that four course meal and trying to lick the last pieces of the crumbs when the waiter is taking away your plate. So again, it's very, very important, guys, no matter how you are trading, okay, stick to your comfort zone, okay? Tesla's not doing anything different that all of us have been trading Tesla for years have seen. You're just now exposed because it's sexy. 
you're now exposed because you don't want to miss the next run. Now you're exposed because the next move could be to six, seven hundred. This is not again. Stick to your lane, guys. Okay, I don't go out and trade crypto. I don't go out to trade futures. I don't go out to trade Bitcoin. I don't. You know, the most part, I don't look at small caps or mid caps because again, there might be aggressive value there. There might be stocks going up three, four hundred percent every single day. That's not for me. That's not my comfort zone. I don't have a relationship with those stocks. I don't know the price action of the stocks. I don't know when a stock stalls out. If a stock is up 210% on the day and it goes up only 20 cents after I buy it, well, how do I know it keeps on going high? Well, uh, you, hope, you hope to guess and pray, but it's not, again, we're not in the praying business. We're in the control of risk business. So again, if you are looking at Tesla, you better make sure you have a defined plan because again, if your plan of action is risk first, right? And value second, you're upside down in the trade. And again, if you've never traded Tesla and your first you know, entry you're thinking about is 500, I promise you you're doing it all wrong. Okay. There's ways to be in this business and there's even faster ways to, to, to get out of this business. And when you're, when you're stepping outside of your comfort zone, when you're prostituting your money for the sake of catching past performance, and that's what you're doing. Think about this. This is all past performance here. Okay. What you're doing is you're setting up for failure because you're chasing the ghosts of Christmas past and now you're not putting yourself in a foundation for, for, for organic order flow, you know, coming into the next couple of weeks. So again, guys, not everything is for everybody. Not every single trade is for everybody. Always think safety first. I've been saying this for years, guys. Lead with your, you know, lead with your shield, okay, not with your chin. Very, very important. Lead with your shield, not with your chin. You don't need to be in everything. Okay, you don't have to be in every single move. You don't have to capture every single tick. Stay calm, stay patient. Something else will come with much more defined risk, with much more tangible upside or downside. And at that point, at least you have the potential of having a reward to risk trade instead of a risk to reward. And that's so important to your development. So uh, market again. Oh, get, getting into the market this week again, just just a monster market. What are you going to do again? War does they don't care about war anymore. The China trade has gone past. Um, Iran is basically stepping down. Although I, I think they did, I think I read this. Uh, I think it was yesterday that I read. I think they admitted to um, shooting down the airline. Um, I could be the Ukrainian. I could be wrong. Uh, please don't uh, quote me. Just do do your research. I'll, I'll actually check it out after I'm done. Uh, but again, we want to see how the market reacts to that. They said it was a human error. Um, I want to see how the market reacts to that. But ult ultimately, man, this market has been incredibly strong, very volatile, absolutely. But uh, the bulls have been very, very, uh, very omnipresent, man, just everywhere, just literally everywhere. And again, until there is a buyer strike, okay, and until there is a buyer strike and stocks just stop going up. On you know on any type of news, that's when you start looking at the backside, uh, and that's when you start looking for confirmation sentiment uh, to change. But again, if you look at all the indexes uh, for the week, S and P was up a percent, uh, Dow Jones is up a percent, the Nasdaq again just keeps on for the strength of Apple and you know strength of Apple and uh, you know and, and Facebook and Alibaba and Tesla and Nasdaq you know up to another two percent. So very very strong move. Semiconductors we we've, we've been talking about. Uh, through this week have been strong. The biotechs have been strong. So again, going into this week, again, you have to be cautiously optimistic. Again, I'm, you know, I'm not a fool. I wasn't born last night. I know they could pull at any time, but at least you have to, you know, at least you have to keep on riding the wave until the sentiment change. Okay. It, it's very, very important. Okay. Don't try to guess when a reversal is going to come. Now, again, is there some obvious weakness in the market? Absolutely. Okay. You got Roku, Okay, that looks like it's about to break down. Okay, it's very, very easy uh, to see. It's just stopped rallying. You got Netflix, and, and again, you know, you got Netflix after you know a pretty big run, right? Pretty big couple of day run. We caught this run here. We caught this uh, two day run here. Uh, now it's just kind of getting weaker. So again, so we have to kind of watch what happens in this bottom channel. Right? And nobody's saying it's going lower, but again, you can see it. Amazon. Again, if you watched uh, Thursday's video after Friday. Uh, we were in Amazon for four days, made a very modest profit and just couldn't rally. You just absolutely couldn't rally. And again, it's starting to look like it might roll over. Again, these are all signs of, well, maybe there's a problem, right? Again, nobody's saying it will be a problem. Again, there's still smart money bets being, you know, put out there ahead of uh, Amazon's earnings. 
2,000, 2,050, 2,100. Am I going to bet against Amazon long term? Absolutely not, right? But for the price action point, if the market goes up 500 points in two days and Amazon still can't go higher, I mean, when is it going to go up? Right? When is it going to go up? So, uh, you know, there, there, are definitely, there are definitely some signs of hesitation, but for the most part, the market continues to be strong. And again, like I said, and I've been saying this uh, for years and years and years, it, you have to simplify things. The market is strong until it's not. I know it's a very, very babyish thing to say, but it's that's the truth. And you don't have to overthink it. So going into this week, I'm definitely uh, cautiously optimistic. I'm obviously watching Roku for some weakness. Uh, I'm going to be watching... Um, possible back test for Tesla, but again, it has to confirm. Uh, again, I would not be surprised if I'm trading into the upside in the sneaky channel. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we are. Less is more value oriented. Remember, you do not need to trade every single day. You don't need to trade every single week. It's all about value. So uh, Friday, again, pretty good day. Uh, pretty good day here. We'll talk about uh, Tesla here in a second. Uh, pretty good day here. Um, you know, I, I really kind of like, um, I really, really kind of like how uh, Beyond, okay, how Beyond woke up uh, this week. Uh, I don't know why I'm on this page. Um, I kind of like where, you know, what, I, what I'm seeing on Beyond this week. Uh, Beyond is, is now back, okay? Beyond is back. Uh, we started talking about Beyond. It started out so innocently on this uh, 7720s area. And again, this is the whole point of just watching option order flow. You don't need to be an options trader. But we started seeing in the beginning of the week when the stock was at 74, uh, 79 calls. And then after the 79 calls, the 85 calls, the 90 calls, the 96 calls, the 100 calls, the 110 calls, the highest uh, print I saw this week was the 115 calls short term. So again, this thing has woke up. Is this going to go to 100 this week? Probably, right? Probably looks low. It looks like the first move uh, should get to 100. Again, the value on beyond is buying this thing on uh, any dip, on any dip until that test uh, of 100. So, uh, you know, Friday was was pretty good stuff as well. Um, let me just, let me switch to my uh, other, other feed. Um, Friday was a pretty, you know, pretty solid day as well. Uh, there was definitely, definitely some value there. Uh, and let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about Friday's session. Um, okay, so yeah, I mean, first and foremost, congratulations uh, again to talk about order flow. Uh, I know a good, good handle you guys were on um, on this SRNE again. We saw calls being traded a um, few days back on SRNE uh, again, level playing field, right? Somebody bought um, the the January. Uh, the January five calls that expire next week, okay, at five bucks. This is a dollar and a half out of the money with a week rental. You know, add news, stock goes up two bucks and change. So I know some of you guys were along SRE overnight and BYND. Congratulations, you lucky bastards. You did very, very well. Again, order flow, order flow, order flow. It matters. Uh, Tesla, again, when I was looking at this area back to the upside, and this is going to be a big area. It never, obviously, it never got up to this 89 and a quarter. In my opinion, this will be the area. If, if the stock is going to go at least test 500, this 89 and a quarter area on Tesla in the future, this will be a big number. And if you look at why, okay, and if you look at why, obviously it didn't get there on Friday, but if you look at why, okay, you see this channel here, right? The top of the channel here is 489 and a quarter. You see the high here in this channel, 489 and a quarter. You see this ca candle here, 489 and a quarter, right? So for this thing to start testing back, again, you don't need to guess if the stock is going to go back higher. Once this thing starts confirming 49 and a quarter, you will get a push at 500. Because again, if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, once it takes out this whole supply, right, and just takes out this upper Bollinger Band, you can see how much airspace you have. So again, if you're looking to the upside, 489 and a quarter. If you're looking to the downside, now this is where it gets very, very interesting. If you can see here, it's the rising five day. Everybody see that? Rising five day here. If it starts taking down the lows here the last couple of days, right, takes the five. Again, if you believe in the theory, the stock's trade from supply to supply and demand to demand. Well, here's the next demand zone. So I'm watching this bottom channel here. I'm watching that 489 and a quarter to the upside. No bias, no stress. I'm waiting for confirmation. I don't care which way it goes as long as it gets confirmed. So that's that on Tesla. Uh, 338, Netflix never gave a second entry. Uh, this thing was huge. Uh, SNX, for all you guys who took this trade, we talked about 141. Right here is the 141, and this thing just, just absolutely exploded. Went to almost 149. Um, Lyft, I still kind of like. Uber, we had on our, uh, on our list earlier in this week, uh, broke out. Lyft actually looks good. Didn't put up a big move on Friday, but it continues to put in uh, higher highs and higher lows. 
uh, over this 46 level. I, I think there's still a puncher shot against the 47 this week. Uh, so that looks pretty good. Uh, Peloton, uh, nice move off the open. We talked, we had this thing uh, as a short uh, below 2755. If it builds below, it can flush. Not a huge flush. I mean, not a huge flush. But again, again, it's a $27 stock and went from 2755 all the way down to 2680s. Again, is that a is that a good move? Okay, so it's very very subjective. Uh, Beyond is just a beast. I think it's gonna it's gonna see 100 this week again. 9410 uh, pre market highs needs to reclaim. Uh, 9410 BYND went nuts. Uh, here's the 9410 pre market highs right. 9410 and da 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 went all the way up to 98. Just a monster. I really like it this week. I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping from a down open on Beyond this week to get it going. Uh, Peloton Perfect SNX went nuts. Uh, Tesla again. I kept I, I kept on trying to find sneakier entries back to the upside. Just never made it up there. Needs to reclaim. But here is the trade I caught. Uh, here is the trade I caught. And this is where we, we don't put um, we we don't put these bounce plays on the Twitter feed. Okay, uh, just because I, I I like to keep it. I, I like to keep it strictly for natural pivots. Uh, obviously, we play a lot of bounce and rejection plays in the live webinar. So here's my here's my uh, trade from Friday. Um, I, I tweeted this out at 9:39. I go, and this is my Twitter, uh, my my regular feed. I said, "Hey, 475. If it traps shorts, it can wake up." Now, why was 475 a, a spot? And this is why I traded 60 minute channels. Okay, everybody see everybody see this this bottom channel uh, this bottom channel here at uh, where is it? Where is it? Right here. Here here it is. Everybody see this bottom channel here? 475. It was, it was 474, but at that time because the price adjusts with time, it was 475. So um, I got long at the 475 remount, right? I got long the 475 remount, and like I said on you know on the tweet, they got trapped. Okay, they they absolutely got trapped. And if you look at if you look at what the stock did, um, if you look at what the stock did um, through that trap, just got absolutely destroyed. I mean, excuse me, it absolutely uh, it absolutely destroyed shorts. I mean, just to the point of uh, no return. Because again, the most important part is if you can't recognize where demand and supply meets, okay, you're going to run in. Okay, you're going to run into emotional buyers meeting technical sellers and technical sellers meeting emotional buyers. And if you look at what happened here from, from the trap, okay, the move was insane. Okay. The move was insane. And again, here was the, you know, here was the, here was the pivot. And I, I wish to God I could have said I caught, I caught this whole move and I didn't, I caught it for a few bucks. I was happy with the move because again, I looked at the five minute supply and I said, holy crap, the supply there. So I took a couple of bucks on this bounce which is nothing wrong, man. I, I would take a couple of bucks on Netflix, uh, on Tesla any day of the week. There was some supply. I didn't think it was going to go through. And not only did it go through that supply, it just put up a rocket move. I know a lot of you guys did a lot better than me on the tier move, right? On the tier move. But the whole point is, again, and I, I firmly believe this, you sell when you want to, not when you have to. And it's a very, very important part of trading. You, you don't want to be a greedy pig. Your process is everything. Your money management is everything. You don't regret, okay? You don't regret what you're looking at in the markets, uh, how you're proceeding with the markets. The most important part is take a piece, right? Just take a piece. You don't got the, You don't have to be a greedy pig. It's great. Sometimes I do catch the measure move. Sometimes I don't. You have to be comfortable with that. You have to be okay with that. And the most important thing is remember, always safety first. So uh, going into this week, guys, uh, again, I'm cautiously optimistic. Okay, I really am. I'm cautiously optimistic. Um, beyond, uh, I am watching. I'm hoping for uh, a dip at the open into rising 60-minute supports. Basically, the same play as Tesla. Uh, Tesla, I am just looking for signs. Okay, Tesla, I'm just looking for signs. Which way is it going to break? Is it going to break above? Um, you know, is it going to break above the sneaky channel here, or is it going to break below the sneaky channel there? I personally think, gun to my head. I think there will be at least one more test of 500 before any type of aggressive move. But again, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It's not going to cost me any money. I'm waiting for price action to come. The only one that I, I am watching on the downside is Roku. Okay, um, and I think there's a problem there. Uh, actually, it was a pivot there that we talked about uh, on Friday to the downside from the 130, uh, 130 level that, that really came in. Uh, you can see here's three channels here to the downside. You have uh, 127.50. 
uh, 127.20, Friday's low is 128. If it starts building below this 50-day moving average, there's room all the way down to 123 before you know before it uh, comes out with earnings. So there is some value here to the downside. I want to see how test how, how Roku reacts to the futures, to the upside, to the downside, just to get more confirmation, collect more data before a macro move can come. So guys, uh, happy uh, Sunday, everybody. Go enjoy your life. More football today. Uh, if you are trading with us tomorrow, uh, morning strategy starts up at 9 o'clock Eastern time. Please be there early. You cannot roll in at 9.29 and say, well, what are we doing? Uh, we, go, we go through extensive, uh, extensive uh, conversation about what's going to happen, what should happen, what we're expecting to happen uh, at Morning Strategy. And if you trade beta, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident to say uh, you'd like what we're doing. Guys, have a great uh, Sunday. God bless. And with God's help, I'll see you all in the field tomorrow. Take care, guys. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today. Thank you.